Welcome to my demo on mutual authentication within ServiceNow. Mutual authentication can be a very difficult and complicated subject. However, after watching this video, you are going to have a better understanding of what is mutual authentication, how you set it up to work with ServiceNow, and plus, you're going to see it all in action. Besides being able to send and receive signed web service requests using WS Security, ServiceNow is also able to consume web services that require mutual authentication. Mutual authentication is not related to WS Security and does not require WS Security in order to be used. Mutual authentication is also known as mutual SSL authentication, two-way SSL authentication, or certificate-based authentication. With this method of authentication, two parties authenticate to each other by first verifying signed certificates that are provided by the other entity. This is called a handshake process, and this process takes place before any web service payload is ever exchanged between the two services. Now, before we go any further, please note that while ServiceNow web service clients can be configured to make SOAP, REST, and other web service requests with mutual authentication, Operational and data center constraints currently prohibit ServiceNow from supporting inbound mutual authentication requests. Now before we dive right into the demo, let's first cover the basics of preparing two services for mutual authentication, as well as talk about what happens when a web service call is made using mutual authentication. In this scenario, we will assume the client to be a ServiceNow instance. The third party service can be any web service that requires mutual authentication. First, a certificate must be generated and signed on behalf of the ServiceNow instance. You can do this on your own, or you can leverage a third-party certificate authority to generate the certificate and private key for you. Once you have your certificate and private key, you should load them into a Java key store file. Once they are loaded into the key store file, that file should be uploaded into the ServiceNow instance as a Java key store record. You should then take the public certificate that was created on behalf of the ServiceNow instance and share that certificate with the third-party service. This is typically done by generating a file in DIR or PEM format and giving that file to the administrator for the other party. The third-party service should also have its own certificate and private key. The administrator of the third-party service should provide the ServiceNow administrator with its own public certificate. That certificate should be uploaded into ServiceNow as a certificate trust record. Additionally, two system properties must be created on the ServiceNow instance to define a mutual authentication protocol. One of the properties should specify which port of the web service will handle the mutual authentication and SOAP request. When setting up these two properties, part of the property name will include a custom protocol identifier. You can name it anything you want. Once all of this is set up, ServiceNow can initiate a web service call to the third party, leveraging mutual authentication by using the protocol class prefix specified in the system property. When the third party system receives the request, it's going to present its signed certificate to the client, or ServiceNow in this case. ServiceNow will validate the third-party certificate against its own copy of the certificate that was provided earlier. It will also validate any trust relationships that are associated with that certificate. Once the validation is complete, ServiceNow will provide its own signed certificate to the third-party service. The third-party service will similarly validate the certificate against a certificate that has been preloaded into its system. It too will validate any trust chains associated with the certificate. When both systems are satisfied with the handshake process, the typical SOAP exchange can occur. The client, which is ServiceNow, will send its SOAP request to the third-party web service for processing. The third party will process the request, build a response, and submit that re response back to ServiceNow. Now let's go ahead and review the steps that are required to set up ServiceNow to be able to make a mutual authentication request. First of all, if you recall, we're going to generate a signed certificate for the ServiceNow instance. The certificate must be generated and signed for the instance before this is to work. For demo purposes, we're going to use a self-signed certificate 
and that's usually fine for a proof of concept or a development instance. In a production system, however, you're going to likely want to generate a certificate and have it signed through a trusted certificate authority. Now, if I were going to generate a self-signed certificate for testing, I might do the following. I'll use the Java key tool uh, command line utility uh, in the following way. I'll, I'll do key tool uh, dash gen key. This means we're going to generate a key. Uh, the key tool is going to be segmented into different aliases uh, of, of groups of records. And so I'm going to create an alias of SNC client. We're going to sign using the, key, the RSA key algorithm. We're going to make it valid for one year. So I'm going to put 365 days. We're also going to name our key store file sncliant.keystore. And we're going to give it a, a key store password of ABC1234. And a key password for the private key also of ABCD1234. Now the tool is going to prompt me with several questions that I need to answer. Uh, and it'll use these answers to generate the certificate. The first is going to be my first and last name. I'll just enter my first and last name and my organizational unit, let's just say ServiceNow, and the name of my organization will say Pre-Sales. My city, well, I live in Shelley, so I'm gonna put Shelley, and I live in the state of Idaho, here in the United States, so I'll do US. It'll give me a quick summary, I'm just gonna say this looks correct, and I'll type yes. Once I complete this, I will have a certificate and private key that will be generated, and they're going to be stored in a Java key store file named sncliant.keystore. Both the key store and the private key will have a password of ABCD1234. Now that we have our key store containing the certificate and private key, we need to upload this into the ServiceNow instance. To do this, we're going to browse to the system definition application and go to the certificates module. Next, we're going to click new to create a new record. We'll give a, the record a name, any name will do, as long as it's descriptive. And then we'll set the type of this record to be a Java key store record. We're going to also want to enter in the key store password. Remember we used ABCD1234. This allows ServiceNow the ability to open up that key store and pull uh, records from it. Then finally we're going to need to attach the key store file to the record. Now once we've done that, we just click the submit button and our key store record has been uploaded and set up in ServiceNow. The next step is to share the public certificate with the third party service. The public certificate that was generated for the ServiceNow instance should be shared with the third party service by exporting the public certificate from your key store into a format accepted by the third party. This is usually in the format of the DER format, which might make it a CER file, or in the PEM format that makes a PEM file that's just a plain text file that the third party can consume. If your certificate had been signed by a certificate authority, it's good to also send all the certificates involved in the trust chain uh, used by the signing authority. Now, in order for us to extract the public certificate from the key store we created, we can issue the following command. We're going to use the key, the, we're going to use the key tool utility. We're going to use the export command. And again, we want to jump into that SN client alias uh, to get the records that are stored in that segment of the, of the trust of the key store. Uh, we're going to specify what key store file we're grabbing this from and it's SN client key store. We're going to also specify what password we had set on the key store so that we can access the contents. And so that'll be ABCD1234. And then we give it uh, an output file. We're going to name our file sncliant.cer. This is going to give us a public certificate in the DIR format by the name of sncliant.sir. I can now give this, I can email it or put it on a thumb drive or, or, or throw it on a network share. Uh, and give it to the person managing the third party service so that they can load it into their own trust store. Now just as we've provided our certificate to the third party service, we also need the third party services certificate 
into ServiceNow. It's best if we can receive it in either PEM or DER format. If the certificate is involved in a trust chain, ask for the corresponding certificates uh, that are involved in that trust chain as well. Now we're going to load the certificate or certificates into the ServiceNow instance by browsing to the system definition application and clicking on the certificates module. We're going to click new and we're going to give this record another descriptive name and then we're going to set the type field for this record to be trust store certificate or trust store cert. If the certificate were in PEM format then set the format field to be PEM and you'd paste the PEM string into the PEM certificate field on the record. Be sure to include the begin certificate and end certificate strings that are associated with the PEM certificate. Now, if the certificate is in DER format, set the format field to DER and simply attach the certificate file to the record. We're going to attach uh, our third party's certificate record here. Okay. And then after we've attached that file, click submit and the record will be populated using the information in the certificate file. Now that our certificates are set up within the system, the next step is to set up the mutual authentication protocol properties within the ServiceNow instance. In order to do this, uh, ServiceNow allows you to define your own protocol and port for communicating with an endpoint that requires mutual authentication. When you use that protocol class, it triggers the mutual authentication to happen. For example, in, I can choose uh, to create a protocol class of my HTTPS rather than just HTTPS so that when this, protocol, when this protocol class is used in an endpoint in the system, it will automatically trigger the mutual authentication over that specified port. Uh, so in order to set this up, I'm, I can set up. I need to set up two properties in the instance that lets me trigger the mutual authentication. So I'm going to jump over to my properties uh, section, and to do this, I just go to sys underscore properties dot list, and I'm going to create a new system property. And I'm going to name it glide dot http client dot protocol dot now this is where I can get custom. Anything I put here uh, in this dot is going to be my, my protocol class string. So if I did HTTPS, whenever I used HTTPS in the system to call a third party service, it would trigger the mutual authentication. That's not usually desired uh, because that overrides, that's a global setting that overrides everything inside of the instance. So I'm going to call it my HTTPS and then the final part is dot class. Now for the value of this property I'm going to use a Java class signature. You're going to always use this class signature for mutual authentication. Uh, you don't have to remember it, it's on the wiki if you just search the wiki for mutual authentication. I'm going to head and go ahead and type it in, it's com.glide.certificates.db.keystore.socket.factory we're going to save that. Now the second property that we need to create is going to define what port we're going to communicate over by default uh, on this protocol. And so I'm going to create the new property and I'm going to name it glide.httpclient.protocol. And again, I'm going to, I need to be consistent. I'm going to use uh, myhttps.port. And the value for this, for my example, is going to be 6767. This is the port that uh, my web service is waiting for uh, that's using mutual authentication. So once these are set up and saved, we'll have these two protocols, uh, system properties, set up and ready to go. Now let's go ahead and test this out and see what it looks like in action. I already have configured a SOAP message record that consumes a, uh, a, a mock web service, a hello world web service that I've created. And uh, the only function available is a say hello function. So we'll go into that. 
Now notice my SOAP endpoint is HTTPS and then the, uh, the endpoint URL. I'm just going to submit a SOAP envelope and that system is supposed to respond with a hello world message. Now we're not invoking mutual authentication yet because we're using the HTTPS protocol. Let's just see what it might look like. Let's go ahead and run a test. And when we run that test, we get this uh, SSL handshake exception that we received a, a bad certificate. That means that it's expecting mutual authentication and we didn't provide any mutual authentication since we were just going over HTTPS with a plain SOAP request. So what we're going to do this time is let's change our endpoint and remember in that system pro uh, property we defined a protocol pl class of my HTTPS and we told it to trigger on port 6767 so we don't even need to specify that port in this endpoint. I'm going to go ahead and save this and let's go ahead let's make that request this time using the my HTTPS protocol identifier. As you can see here, look at the uh, response. There's our hello world response given to us by that mock uh, web service. Well, and that's all there is to it. I hope that over these past several minutes, we've been able to demystify the concept of mutual authentication and provide a guide that will allow you to confidently set up your own ServiceNow instance to communicate through mutual authentication with a third party service in the future. Thanks again for watching.